Hey everybody, welcome to 5 Years Ahead, I'm Brandon Kruger. Today I wanted to introduce my model of Tesla's battery supply. I started this project last year in hopes of gaining some insight into how many batteries Tesla was getting from which suppliers. The way I approached it led to dozens of sheets and it just became too big to work with. This year I started fresh using a new approach and some better data. This time I started with Troy Teslike's estimation of trim level split based on average sale price. Conveniently, this data starts in Q1 of 2020, which was the start of Model 3 production in China and Model Y production in Fremont. I then determined when vehicles were being exported from which factories. The percentages indicate how much of the mix would have come from Fremont with the remainder coming from Shanghai. I guessed at these percentages until the ratio of vehicles from each factory was in line with the actual production. This lets me translate Troy's chart from units delivered to to units delivered from. Keep in mind this sheet is based on deliveries, so while Shanghai became the primary export hub in Q2 of 21, we don't see the full impact of that until Q3 and beyond. I then took these numbers and Tesla's official delivery numbers and plugged them into this actual delivery sheet. I use this sheet to check the accuracy of my delivery model. The green represents known numbers and the orange are my assumptions. I've done the same thing with actual production numbers, only we don't have any trim specific data here. I made a sheet to calculate inventory that would result from my modeled production and delivery, and this let me build a production model that results in a rational inventory that never goes negative. Once I had a complete model of vehicle production, I started to figure in energy storage. Energy storage products, the Powerwall 2, Powerpack, and Megapack, used 2170s until LFP was introduced in the Megapack in Q2 of 21. Therefore, we know all of those cells came from either LG Chem or Nevada. Given this graph of the actual output of the Nevada factory, I adjusted Nevada's contribution to energy storage until the resulting vehicles plus energy storage equaled Nevada's actual output. As you can see, this resulted in four quarters of a negative contribution to energy storage. In these four quarters, Panasonic's output was unable to keep up with ramping Model 3 production and cells from LG Chem were used to fill the shortfall. Despite this delayed ramp, Panasonic was able to come back and in the second half of 2019 met all vehicle demand and about 90% of energy storage. The drop in supply from LG in 2019 may raise a question, why wouldn't Tesla keep that supply coming to make more cars or more energy storage products? I think the best answer to this would be that Tesla likely wasn't getting those cells for a great price. Tesla likely came to LG begging for an emergency supply of cells to ramp the Model 3 before they went bankrupt. So I would bet those cells cost a bit above normal price. Starting in 2020, I've had to make some assumptions as to how much has come from Nevada, LG, and CATL. If anyone can point me to any data that could improve accuracy here, I'd really appreciate it. I hope if I can crowdsource a bit more data, the whole community can gain a really accurate picture of all the batteries flowing through Tesla. Anyway, the energy storage numbers for each supplier get added to the vehicle demand for each supplier, and I pull the quarterly numbers out into this battery supply sheet. This shows kilowatt hours supplied by each supplier in each quarter. This is where I'll make some conservative projections for this year. I originally thought Elon had said that Tesla expects to receive double the sales from the suppliers in 2022 over 2021. The actual quote was, we do expect from suppliers willing to receive double the cell output next year versus this year, end quote. I don't think this will include Panasonic as they've struggled to find employees to expand Nevada and haven't announced plans to expand beyond the current 38 or 39 gigawatt hours of nameplate capacity. I think we'll only see a doubling from LG and CATL. Therefore, I have Panasonic's 18650 supply from Japan ramping up to previous levels we've seen around 10 gigawatt hours per year as Model S and X ramp back up. What's interesting is the last pricing agreement Tesla reached with Panasonic for Japan sales only lasts until March 31st of this year. 
I can't imagine Tesla would be switching the S and X off of 18650s that soon, so I suspect this was done as a short-term deal to see how supply of 4680 plays out. I have the Nevada Gigafactory creeping up and leveling off at a 90% yield rate on that 39 gigawatt hour level of stated capacity. I've estimated slightly more than a doubling for CATL and slightly less for LG. I have Cato Road and Austin rather low, I hope. I built the Cato Road ramp to arrive at the millionth cell this quarter and ramp exponentially from there. But I don't think Cato Road will ever consistently output near the 10 gigawatt hour level Tesla has mentioned. I think the plan is for it to be their sandbox for testing production changes and alternative chemistries before they're deployed in other factories. I have Austin ramping faster than Cato, but only up to a 6 gigawatt hour run rate in Q4. I hope this is way low. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think the 4680 ramp in Austin will look like. Now let's take a look at the charts. Here is the run rate coming from each supplier, which is just the last sheet multiplied by 4. In orange, we can see LG's contribution jump in 2018 until the Nevada factory in red stepped up its game. Supply from LG then fizzled out until 2020 when they started supplying cells for the Made in China Long Range 3 and later the Y. The dark blue line is 18650 supply from Panasonic Japan, and you'll notice a dip at the start of 2019, which I believe was the changeover to the Raven SNX. It understandably dips again after the start of You Know What, but dips the most after the botched ramp of Plaid SNX. I have SNX returning to consuming about 10 gigawatt hours a year as it has before, but Panasonic has stated they have around 50 gigawatt hours of total capacity, so there could potentially be 11 or 12 gigawatt hours a year available for the SNX. The light blue line represents LFP from CATL, and you'll notice how quickly CATL has become very important to Tesla. I expect this quarter CATL will be Tesla's largest single supplier of batteries, at about a 35 gigawatt hour run rate. I'm projecting this run rate to approach 48 gigawatt hours by the end of the year. While I'm not going to figure in any supply from BYD until there is official news, it does seem increasingly likely. I can't imagine Tesla likes being so dependent on CATL for LFP. Lastly, the yellow line is Cato Road and the green line is Austin. Again, hopefully these are very low estimates. I'll be putting out a video at least every quarter to provide an update as new data comes in, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss those updates. In the next chart, we have the total run rate of all battery supply with and without 4680s. This is really going to get crazy as 4680s ramp and other new factories come online. We'll talk more about the growth CATL and LG are planning in another video. As of now, I estimate total supply will cross the 100 gigawatt hour run rate mark this quarter and around 140 gigawatt hours by the end of the year. Let's take a look at what these supply numbers mean in terms of products. This sheet takes the total kilowatt hours from each supplier for 2022 and divides them between energy storage and vehicles. Depending on how much goes to energy storage, it currently looks like we could see 1.4 to 1.6 million vehicles produced from this level of supply we will likely also be seeing record levels of energy storage. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be providing periodic updates on this model. I'll have this spreadsheet linked in the description below if you would like to take a closer look. If you have any information regarding the mix of standard range, mid range, and long range Model 3 before 2020, please comment down below. Also, any information on what went into energy storage products in 2020 and 2021 or CATL switch from 55 to 60 kilowatt hour packs would be very helpful. If you'd like to see any certain scenarios modeled, drop me a comment or find me on Twitter at 5 Years Ahead. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.